Welcome back to News On. I'm time now to talk about your money. Easy for me to say. So the new numbers are out for the economy, and there is some good news. Uh, the GDP grew at a reported 6.9% uh, pace, closing out 2021, which is stronger than what was expected, even with the Omicron variant spreading throughout the country. Now, the gross domestic product also grew, accelerating at a 6% annualized pace during the fourth quarter, again, better than estimated. So there are some gains there. But as we mentioned earlier in the week, there is talk about raising those interest rates uh, as early as March. And we could see two other hikes taking place this year. To help it break it all down for us, we want to welcome in the CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Always good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right, so really that's what it all comes down to. So what do you think about this GDP number out there? And break it down in layman's terms for us, for people who are not you know, financial advisors like yourself. Uh, what does this mean to the average everyday American? I don't think it really means much. It was the fourth quarter, which was the holiday season. So people typically purchase more during the end of the year. That's why you have something called Black Friday, where retail stores really have most of their sales and go into then the black towards the end of the year. So I don't think that really says much. And overall, people now finally are getting going out and about a little bit more than back in 2020. So this is really just normal purchasing and buying that you would normally see through the recovery period. I don't think this is really something that's indicative of anything that would happen other than the fact that we are coming out of COVID. Hopefully we're finally out of COVID. All right, now let's talk about something that really does hit people in the wallet, and that is this idea of the Fed uh, raising those interest rates. What does that mean? Because there's talk that it could happen three times this year in the very earliest March. What does that mean for consumers when it comes to mortgage rates, credit cards, student loans, you name it? Well, it's definitely important if you're looking to buy or make a big purchase, something like a car or a home, try to make that big purchase if you've been planning on doing it before rates go up. So you have at least probably till the end of February. The Fed is talking about raising rates, but they haven't really signaled how many times, like you had mentioned, is it going to be two? Is it going to be three? Could it be four or five? They're trying to get ahead of inflation, but it's too late already. We're already in inflation. And I really don't think that raising rates is going to prevent rising prices because part of the reason that we have an inflationary period is because we don't have enough people back to work full force yet. People are not back to work for many, many reasons since COVID. And raising interest rates is not going to stop rising prices if we still have a problem getting our goods and services or getting them delivered with the, with the truckers. But getting back to rates and what people need to think about is, for example, say you have $10,000 in credit card debt and they increased rates by a quarter of a percent. That's about $25 for every 10000 in debt if they raise your bump up your rate on your credit card, which they probably will, whatever the rate bumps up. They may raise rates by 50 basis points or half a point. That would be bad, okay? So if it ends up going up that much of a jump, I definitely think the market would end up selling off or having some kind of negative reaction to that. They need to raise rates slowly. They need to do it not more than three times in the calendar year, in my opinion, if we're going to do it. And I still don't think that really stops or prevents higher inflation. Yeah, okay. So that's not actually, you know, you just said that you don't think it's going to help inflation. And, you know, inflation is about 7%. It's the highest of what we've seen since the 1980s. And some places, some pockets, we talked about this last week, places that you wouldn't normally expect, places in the Midwest are seeing uh, inflation at the rate of 9%. Could there be, and I'm just, you know, it's Friday. I want to give people just a little nugget of good news. Could this help at all, potentially, drive down the cost of certain things like, I don't know, housing? Really, when you think about it, we've had such a housing boom, there was going to be a bubble at some point in housing anyways. So even if they don't, even if this doesn't slow down housing, while it could, it definitely could to your point, I don't necessarily think the housing was going to continue at some rapid pace anyways. Anybody that wanted to buy pretty much probably already has in the last almost two years now. It's two years since COVID. March of 2022 will be two years. So I, it could slow it down. The good news on the horizon is for people, again, that if things get so bad in the economy and so bad with the Biden administration, 
that that people have had enough that when they go and vote in the midterms, then they're really going to show it in the vote and things could turn around in the country within 12 months from now. So, I mean, to think that, again, that this problem that's been exasperating going on now for going on to two years with all the free money going around, the low interest rates for so long. The last time the Fed raised rates was 2018. I mean, they haven't raised rates at all for so long. So it's it's just something that was bound to happen. I My opinion is that it's not going to stop inflation. And I do not think that they should raise rates a half a point right away. And I don't think they should do it more than three times a year. That should be the most they should do it. We could possibly go into recession. If they raise rates too high, too quick, too fast in the next 12 months, and and that would not be good. All right, Melissa Armo, thank you so much. You gave us some food for thought. We always appreciate it. Happy Friday to you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. As always, you heard what Melissa had to say. She doesn't think it should be more than three times, and she doesn't think it's really going to help curb inflation. We'd love to know your thoughts. You can always weigh in by finding me at Real Miranda Con. Hashtag share your voice. In other news, though,